Hello, my name is Sydney and I am currently applying to medical school for the 2020 application cycle. I personally have taken the MCAT three times, so I am no newbie to this rodeo, but I did want to make a video compiling all the tips as well as lessons that I learned that helped me raise my score from a 510 to a 517. So without further ado, Let's get started. My first tip would be to set yourself up for success. And what I mean by that is location, location, location. First, ask yourself which environment would optimize your chances of success. Do you work better at home where you are near the support of your family, life stressors are kind of taken care of, or is home a distraction where sitting at your apartment when you're surrounded by other people doing the same things would be that crucial motivation factor for you. In addition to the physical environment, I wish I personally would have taken a step back to reprioritize my other time commitments. Personally, myself, I came in with the mindset of, oh no, like I don't wanna dedicate everything to the MCAT because there's so many other things that I have to keep tabs on. But by spreading myself too thin with summer courses, research, volunteering, keeping account what I can personally handle, that actually prolonged the time I dedicated to the MCAT since I couldn't really nail it that first try. The second tip would be to set up a realistic study plan. So the first and hardest part of anything is always starting. For me, kind of babysitting my way in consisted of having the first day be dedicated solely to creating my study plan. People usually say if this is your first go at the MCAT and you are studying full time, two and a half months to three months is optimal. If you are doing things such as taking courses concurrently or working full time maybe, then having a longer timeline might be helpful for you. So after I set my study schedule, I made it a point to factor in catch up days just so I personally wouldn't have moments where I felt overworked. It is kind of a psychological trap where if you plan your days where it's unrealistic, you get into the tendency where you're falling behind pretty frequently. And just having that normalcy of falling behind is not really helpful or motivational for you to stick to that plan and make sure that every single day is purposeful and that these goals are attainable. In addition to that, just sitting down and mapping out everything will kind of put those anxieties or those uncertainties of like, oh my god, where do I get started? Like, what do I even do today? To rest. To kind of counteract waning motivation since that does happen is I started incorporating the Pomodoro timer. I also started reframing my rest days as not like, Ooh, okay, I'll just chill because I know I have this rest day to catch up. My rest day is solely dedicated to rest. In thinking that way, you kind of honor those days as mental resets. So when you start the next week, you are fresh and you are ready. Third tip is to make sure you are actively studying as opposed to passively studying. What this really boils down to is becoming more comfortable about doing the uncomfortable. I know sometimes the sheer act of doing something kind of gives you that like, <laughs> like I'm studying, oh yeah. But there truly is a difference between passively taking notes versus forcing yourself to practice problems that you know will cause strain or cause you to kind of do that oh like I know I don't know this or like I remember this because by forcing yourself to face your weaknesses head-on you're more likely to practice those skills and have those as usable tools when you do face this during the exam the first time I studied for my MCAT I broke up the study sessions into three distinct phases content practice and full length exams. What I actually ended up doing when I saw the most improvement was I condensed my content. So yes, I still went over the material and took notes, but I didn't let that drag on and on and on. What I did to use my time efficiently is I integrated content and practice simultaneously. So instead of doing content on one chapter and just doing discrete problems right after that, it's not really representative of how you'd see things in the exam. I used a workbook and content review books simultaneously in a random order just to make sure sure that I knew the material but also I wasn't becoming reliant on being spoon-fed what I was supposed to know. Another way I ensured I was actively practicing was I got a mistake that I understood the core reason why I got that problem wrong instead of just memorizing that specific problem. You'll start seeing after a while when you do do a lot of practice problems that there's only so much that they can ask. It's the concepts that stay consistent, not necessarily the same exact passage. Let's say you get a problem on steroids. Over time, some things automatically pop off in my brain. So steroids, nonpolar, nonpolar, passes through membrane, passes through membrane, goes to nucleus. You kind of get a gist of, okay, if this is a general pathway that they keep on honing in, I can kind of think steroid transcriptional regulation. Another way to gauge if you are actively reviewing, try teaching it to someone else instead of just reading the explanation that the tests give you. Try seeking help from a buddy that you trust to make sure that you're being honest that yes, I'm walking away from this problem knowing that I understand what I was supposed to. Tip number four, be mindful of the material 
materials that you are using. The whole sentiment, quality over quantity, is what I wish I fully internalized. First time I studied for the MCAT, I kind of just bought into brand names or seeing that, oh, my friend took this course and she did well, so I need to take that course in order to do well. But in actuality, being honest of why you might seek certain services or resources could help you not only save time, but a lot of money. So the course I specifically took was good for people who needed discipline of a classroom to stay accountable to studying for the MCAT. For me personally, I needed someone to teach me how to review and more focus on strategy. Let's say you're not taking a course, but you have access to this plethora of third-party companies. Sometimes going through everything because you don't want to miss certain details can do more harm than good. In actuality, you don't need to know every single nitty-gritty detail to do well in the MCAT. Granted, that will help you with those low yield points to kind of differentiate between a high score from a higher score. Let's say for my sakes, it was more so focusing on strategy, not so much content. With access to all these different resources, I wish I wasn't so privy to fall into, oh, I must experiment like this, this, and that because this is what this book preached. For example, there's some courses or some books that tell you to be comfortable with skipping around or reading the question first, but that kind of spooked me more than anything. One thing that I wish I was more okay with letting go of things that absolutely do not work. Sometimes we get into the habit of like, oh, okay, I'm already doing this for so long. Like, let me just finish it because that just makes me nervous. Yes, Change is scary, but sticking onto something solely because you started it isn't a good reason for you to continue on with it. In my case, I have heard Anki used as a buzzword, but I got into the habit of transcribing exam problems on Anki cards and it was time consuming. Fifth tip would be to simulate real life testing scenarios. If you can maximize the amount of passages you do, all the better for you. I had a huge problem with timing. Without pressure, I would be able to answer questions but when I would take these exams, if I wasn't practicing passages under strict timer, I would find myself missing things completely. Since I struggled with time, something that I personally implemented for every single section was to have checkpoints to make sure that I wasn't spending too much time in the beginning passages because that ultimately threw me off to not be able to even look at or give the later passages a chance. For example, I used that halfway mark to tell myself, okay, by this time, I should see 45 minutes remaining. When approaching test day, you want to minimize anything new or crazy that would throw you off. Before every test day, I would simulate the time I woke up, how long it took for me to get ready, what I would wear during test day, what kind of meals I would eat, so there would be nothing that would throw me off guard. Leading up to the actual test day, you find yourself relishing in having the discipline or having that steady routine. So let's say you struggle with being alert really early in the morning. Having yourself fall asleep and waking up at certain times will increase your chances of feeling alert and feeling ready and focused to kill that exam. Lastly, the thing that I feel was so crucial for me to do well was to let go of any preconceived notions of I can't. Number six, adjust your mindset. I've always grown up kind of with that idea that like, oh, I'm a hard worker, but when it comes to tests, I just get so nervous that I just can't perform. Living in that I can't mentality kept me stuck to feeling like I just couldn't improve. Never in a thousand years. Actually, no, that's dramatic. Never would I ever think that I was capable of doing well. So I kind of always had this mindset of I'm scared or I hope or I pray that I can get that score that I want but seems unattainable for me. By letting go of this I can't, you free yourself from the pressure of seeing every single setback as a failure or as confirmation that that's my capacity. Instead, I tried really hard to reframe scores I wasn't happy with as opportunities to really go in on seeing why I made that mistake. What can I do to prevent that? And just excitement for me to keep on working at it. One thing that personally helped me in adjusting my mindset was taking myself out of that bubble where I was constantly comparing myself to my peers. Having peers around is helpful to keep you motivated and push you, but everybody's journey is different, everybody's end goal is different, and everybody's strategy is different. I personally watched a lot of videos on YouTube as I'm making now of what worked for people or people doing so well in a limited amount of time. Just know that yes, pulling a Hail Mary is possible, but you honestly will give yourself the best chance of success if you are consistent. You set yourself up in terms of resources, materials, timelines, organization, and that you just do. This is just a stepping stone and whatever happens will happen. You are capable, you are smart, and you will get it done. So 
yeah, I don't know. There wasn't really a lot of structure in this video, but I kind of just wanted to sit down and have that big sister pep talk that I've FaceTimed or I've said to a many friends who have gone to me as I am the poster child in my college of not really getting the MCAT the first time. But just know from someone that had very low self-efficacy or a constant case of the I can'ts that it is possible. You do have time. You are a hard worker and you can do it. I definitely will compile my study schedule just to share for anyone else that might help. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.